Hi everybody, today I'm going to be making a video about the iPod Touch 4th generation and whether or not it is still worth it in early 2018. So this is the iPod Touch 4th generation released in September of 2010. These were super popular back then in 2010, 2011, and 2012. You know, all the cool kids had these and it was a great device overall. So first of all, we're going to be talking about why you would even want an iPod Touch 4th generation in early 2018. Now obviously this is not going to be your daily driver device nowadays, so the only reason why you would really want it is for music, like let's say your iPhone is low on storage and you can put your music onto this device and then save space on there and then just listen to your music on your iPod Touch. Um, and the other reason would be purely for just nostalgia reasons. You know, the latest update for the iPod Touch 4th generation is iOS 6.1.6, .6, which is basically the last version of like the classic iOS look and feel. And it really is something special. It has a great design and, you know, it looks all skeuomorphic and realistic and you just don't get this kind of character anymore. So it is a really cool interface. So yeah, that might be another reason why you would want this device. Um, another reason would be price. Um, obviously, since this is pretty old by now, you can get these for super cheap on eBay. And it comes in 8, 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte capacities in a black or white front. Um, the back is always just this silver chrome look, while the front can be black or white. So an 8GB iPod 4 would be about $25 on eBay, and then a 16GB would be like $35, 32GB would be $45, and 64GB would be about $55. And again, it of course all depends on the condition of the iPod. Um, if you're getting like just a good condition one, not like a flawless, perfect one with no scratches at all, um, then it would probably be around those prices. But if it was like completely shattered, then it would be cheaper, and then if it was like in mint condition, then of course it would cost more. So yeah, another reason is price. So next, we're going to be just taking a look and seeing what you can still do with the iPod Touch 4th generation here in early 2018. Now first of all, I'm just going to say that the iPod 4 still has a pretty nice design. Um, it still looks really nice, um, except for those scratches on the back, which are definitely going to happen um, since this chrome stainless steel material just gets scratched way too easily. Um, and also the display, this was the first iPod with a retina display. Um, of course we first saw that with the iPhone 4 and this came out a couple months after. It's almost the same display as the iPhone 4 except it is a TN panel instead of an IPS. So as you can see the viewing angles are not as good, um, kind of loses the color and gets a little washed out when you rotate it to the side. You can see kind of that blue tint. Um, but it's still a really good looking display actually, surprisingly. And I feel like iOS 6 just brings that out even more with all the, you know, realistic looking UI elements. And it just looks really good on this display. So this device also has a rear facing and front facing camera. Now, neither of them are really that great. Um, so the rear-facing one only takes 0.7 megapixel photos, so a really low resolution. Um, however, it does record 720p video, um, which was pretty good for the time in 2010. Um, nowadays, it's not so great, but still, you get HD video recording on this thing. And then the front-facing camera is even worse. It's only 0.3 megapixels, and it is a VGA um, video recording. However, it is still nice to have a camera on this thing just to take some quick photos and videos, even if the quality isn't the best. You can actually do FaceTime on this device. It's the first iPod with FaceTime, and it still works pretty well. So there is FaceTime. Of course, the quality isn't going to be as good as newer iPhones and iPods, but you still get FaceTime, so you can still talk to your friends that way. Now, like I said before, this device is a great music player. Um, you can sync all your music from iTunes, or you can buy new music on the iTunes store right here. 
Um, same thing goes for videos, like TV shows and movies. So you can watch those on here. Um, in terms of music playback, you know, it's not the best sound quality. This device doesn't have the best DAC inside of it, which is a digital audio converter. So the sound quality isn't going to be as good as a like first generation iPod Touch, for example. But it still gets the job done, you know, you can listen to music and it works great. You also get iMessage on this device, so you can communicate with people that way and it works flawlessly. And now we're going to talk about apps. So this device, of course, has the App Store and you can install apps. However, there's not that many apps that still are compatible with iOS 6. But luckily, if you do have a newer iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch and you've installed apps on it, then you can install those same apps on this device using the same Apple ID, but it will just be an older version of that app. There are still a couple of apps out there where the latest version will work with iOS 6. So you can see installing Bloons Tower Defense 5. Um, it doesn't ask you to download an older version because the latest version still works on iOS 6 and this app actually has gotten updated recently so yeah that's pretty cool um, most of the apps that still work with iOS 6 have not been updated in a really long time but there are a few that do so I've installed a couple of apps on here that you guys might be using all of them require an older version except for the last two so Instagram, you can see here, it still has that classic look, so if you liked the classic look, then this would be a good device to use Instagram on. Um, it still does work, you can log in to your account and everything, and it works and everything. Um, you can still see all of your feed, and you can even post from here, except it is just going to be a little bit slow to use. Um, the only thing that doesn't work is the DM. So, I do have direct messages, but they just won't show up here. And if we try to um, send another one, you actually have to take a photo of the DM back then. So, if we try to send this, then you will see that it does not work. This version of direct is unavailable. So, yeah, that doesn't work. Um, it hasn't worked for a while, actually. But everything else works, you just won't be getting those new features like Instagram Stories and things like that. Next is Snapchat. Now, this does not allow you to log in or sign up at all. So if we try to log into our account, you will see could not connect. Um, but I do have internet connection, so it just Snapchat that doesn't work anymore. Now we have Facebook. Um, this one, I don't actually know if it works or not, so we will see. It looks like it is working, so I guess you are able to sign in and use this. And I don't know what works and what doesn't, but Facebook should still work on this device. Um, you can see we've got notifications here. It is just really slow, so you kind of have to be patient with it. Next is Twitter. And this one works as well. So Twitter still works on iOS 6. It just takes a really long time to load and everything. Next we have YouTube. And this also works perfectly. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, next we have a couple of games. So we have Tiny Tower. Um, this one is actually really fun. Um, but it's an much older version, so it's a lot different than the new one. And we've got Game Center. Now what I have found with this version of Tiny Tower on iOS 6 is that after a while it just starts crashing. However, if you put your device into airplane mode, then it will start working again. So it's kind of weird. You just have to use Tiny Tower in airplane mode at all times. And then next we have Tiny Wings. Again, this is a super fun game and it works perfectly on this device. So yeah, there's Tiny Wings. So yeah, that's another really fun game. And these last two, the latest versions of them do work with iOS 6. So we have Balloons Tower Defense 5. 
Um, this one works perfectly and it gets updated um, pretty frequently actually and still works on iOS 6 as soon as it decides to load. So there is Balloons Tower Defense 5 working on the iPod Touch 4th generation. Another really fun game, but it is $1.99. And finally we have Rolling Sky. Again, the latest version supports iOS 6. However, when you try to open it, it just crashes. And this is going to be the case with a lot of apps. So just be prepared for that. So as you can see, if you don't have a newer iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch or a computer with iTunes, then your app selection is going to be pretty limited. And also app support on iOS 6 is going to be a lot better than iOS 5, for example. Now let's also talk about some of the apps that come preloaded on the iPod. So we already talked about FaceTime. Calendar is pretty self-explanatory. Um, don't need to go into that. And then we have photos, obviously you just view your photos and you can do slideshows and everything and share your photos from here. And then we have camera, videos, you can watch your TV shows and movies there. Now maps, this one actually does not work on iOS 6, um, it never works, um, it just shows this grid. So. That is not going to work for you on this device. Then we have the weather, and this works perfectly good for checking your weather. Passbook, um, this is where you can store your boarding passes and movie tickets, things like that. Um, should still work as you find some apps for Passbook. And then we have notes, again, pretty self-explanatory here. Then we have reminders. Um, again, this is where you can just like make your to-do list and check things off, things like that. Then we have clock, and this comes with a world clock, alarm clock, stopwatch, and timer. We have newsstand, um, which is not really an app. It just kind of goes here on the home screen and you can download magazines and newspapers in the app store for your newsstand. And we have the iTunes store. This is where you can purchase music and videos and movies. Um, still works. App store. Obviously we already looked at that. And then we've got settings. This is where you can control all the options for your device like the wallpaper and this one does come with some good wallpapers. So yeah can also set your own, of course. Um, yeah, you get access to all of your controls, like accessibility, um, different things, your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So yeah, um, you got messages. Um, you can communicate with other people that have iMessage. Then we've got your email. Um, this may or may not work depending on which email service you use. Um, I know for me, Gmail does not work on this device. So yeah, it just depends. And then Safari is of course your web browser and it still works, obviously. Just as slow. And then finally we have music and stocks, um, which also works. You can see all your stock market information. And then you've got contacts, and we can store your contacts. And then a calculator, which still works. I mean, obviously, why would it not? And then voice memos, which you can record little voice recordings here. So, yeah. Now, next, we're going to talk about performance on this device. Um, you've already seen it's pretty slow. Like, if we just open up Instagram, it takes a pretty dang long time to load here. So, we're still waiting on it, and we're still waiting and there it finally goes so yeah um launching apps is not going to be great and my home button doesn't work um and then gaming performance it can be a little laggy at times especially for those more intensive games but for a lot like tiny wings which is a pretty simple game um it's pretty smooth um, minecraft things like that overall it's not the fastest device but you know it's not unbearably slow either. Um, some other things about this iPod. The battery life on it is not great. Um, 
iPod Touch battery life has never been very good, especially compared to the iPhone. So yeah, just expect to get maybe like one to two hours of screen on time on this thing. Maybe a bit more, maybe like an hour and a half to two and a half hours, somewhere around there. So yeah, it's not great. Um, you're going to have to charge this pretty often. And of course it is an old battery since these devices haven't been made for a while. So yeah, also um, the buttons on it, since it has this kind of tapered design, the buttons are kind of on the side a little bit more, or like on the back almost. Um, so you kind of have to get used to pressing the button on the side rather than the top. So you, that can take some time to get used to. Also the home button, um, the home button on the iPod Touch 4th generation has been notorious to just fail, so um, it doesn't always work properly, so sometimes you're just trying to go to the home screen and it doesn't work. Um, this one's still pretty good, but like, I just pressed the home button once there and it opened up the multitasking, which requires a double press, or sometimes you'll press it twice and it only um, activates once, but yeah, this one's still pretty good actually but it still has some problems with it, so be prepared for the home button not to work perfectly. So that was just my little review of the iPod Touch 4th generation, and to answer the question of whether it's worth it or not in early 2018, the answer is obviously no. I mean, this it's just not practical anymore, especially for a daily driver device. However, if you are just looking at it for nostalgic purposes, then this is absolutely a great device. It is one of my favorite iPod Touches ever made, and I absolutely love this thing. So if you're like me, and you just want it for the nostalgia of iOS 6, then I would highly recommend it. It is one of the easiest ways to experience iOS 6, since it cannot upgrade past that point, and it is a better experience than the iPhone 3GS because of that retina display. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. And if you're wondering whether or not my channel is kind of starting to become like an Apple products channel, um, I guess it kind of is. So I might be needing to change my channel name soon, which is really bad timing since I just changed my channel URL to say Trevor M Vlogs. Um, and you have to reach like a certain number of subscribers or some requirement, I don't know, to change it again. Um, so yeah. But if you guys have any suggestions for a new channel name for my new Apple products channel, then leave it in the comments down below. I would appreciate it. Um, so that's it for this video, and peace.